Hey guys, my name is Jack Han, and I recently collaborated with DAT Booster to bring you this video. In this video, we're going to do a quick rundown on how to fill out your ASDAS application. Let's get into it. The Adia ADSAS application. Have you heard of it? The Adia ADSAS application is the application portal that every single dental school use for their admissions process. Today, I'm going to give you a quick run through of the whole application from start to finish and my personal tips on how to best fill it out. My name is Jack Han. I am currently a D1 at University of California, San Francisco, and I filled out this application a few years back, but it is extremely similar and there's barely any differences. As I will show you, I have the newest application pulled out in front of me. I told Adia that I am reapplying for this cycle, which I am not, but I'm saying I am in order to help all of you watching. So let's get into it. I'm gonna sign in. And you see that there are four main categories, personal information, academic history, supporting information, and program materials. It is a great user interface, very intuitive, and I think better than the college application process. The application cycle this year opens up June 1st, so if you haven't started already, this is your hint. Go now and start the application. Wait, 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 oh, well, after you watch this video, go and start this application if you have not already. Here's my first pro tip apply early because dental school admissions is a rolling admissions process so they're going to be getting applications throughout every single day this means the longer you wait the more spots are already going to be filled in the dental schools and then the less chance that one of the spots has your name on it if you hand it in early it also gives the dental schools a sense that you have your act together and they're going to look highly on that so please hand it in as early as you can the only caveat though is please have everything filled in before you click that submit button. Looking back on this application, there's definitely some nostalgia and got a weird feeling about this because this took so long to fill out and it was such a big process in applying to dental school. I mean, it is your application. Without further ado, let's jump into personal information. So we're gonna go on to personal information and there's eight sections. So you really shouldn't have to think too hard about this section and you should be able to breeze through it. You're gonna go, through all the categories, the release statement. I am not currently applying to dental school, so go ahead and read this and then check the boxes, save and continue. Continue to the next section. All my personal information is already filled in here. Go to the next section. Contact information, citizenship information, environmental factors, parent slash guardian. I trust that you guys know how exactly to fill that out. I personally can't help you on that because it is your personal information. In the other information section, there are two subsections I really want you to pay attention to. You have the COVID-19 impact and the manual dexterity. So I didn't have these two sections, but something happened in the last year that was called a global pandemic. And pretty much what happened, well, you already know all this. Obviously COVID-19 impacted everyone and you as well in a specific way and here is where you can explain i heard of people's dat being canceled or delayed or moved this is where you should say it some people chose to take the time to take a leave of absence because they didn't want to do the online classes and they weren't getting enough out of it here's where you get to explain it you might have lost your job you might have lost your shadowing experience or a volunteer opportunity here is where you can explain it. When the admissions counselors look at your application, they're going to know that COVID-19 had an impact on you. So think of this subsection as like your excuse subsection. If something went horribly wrong in your life, either academic, professional, or personal, this is where you can explain it. The admissions counselors are gonna know that everyone had a tough time and they want to know how it personally affected you so they can keep that into account when they read through the rest of your application. This isn't just a section where you can put what's wrong because for example, there's a question, did you seek out volunteer opportunities that arose from the crisis? If you did, then show that you had a kind heart and this section will be a strength for you. The manual dexterity subsection is also really important here. Here's where you can put any hand skills you may have learned throughout your life that you're proficient at, that you're good at, right? It's easier for admissions to judge if you were a good student by your GPA or DAT, or if you had a kind heart by volunteering at this many places. But a harder thing to prove to them is the manual dexterity part, because in dentistry, working with your hands is a really big part of the profession, and they wanna see if you have any previous experience that could translate into good hand skills. All right, let's move on to academic history. So this section is more personal information about the high school you attended, colleges and universities. And the tip I have for this is if I go to my colleges and universities, 
you see that I put Clark University, Becker College, and UCI. It's really important to put every single school that you went to in here, even for a brief period of time. So I did my undergrad my whole four years at Clark University. During that, my college had a program where I could take classes at other universities around the area, and one of them was Becker. So I ended up taking a couple classes at Becker. And yes, they did show up on my Clark University transcript, but they also want to see it clearly listed out on your application. I also took one class and did research for one summer at University of California, Irvine, which I also made sure to include here. They're going to ask for your transcript entry and also official transcript from each of the programs. And this is very crucial that you don't get it wrong. Your transcript entry might be something that you start on because it could take a while for them to receive your official transcript in order to check what you put under the transcript entry. So you actually go in and look at your unofficial transcript. So I would have my unofficial transcript pulled up and then also the AdSAS application on the side. And then I'd put in each class that I took with the grade and make sure not to make a mistake because that could put a major hindrance in how fast the dental schools receive and review your application. If you get anything wrong here and then you send your official transcript and they don't perfectly get matched up, it could cost you weeks in the application process. So it's really crucial that you put in everything on the dot. When I was filling out this application, the only problematic area was subject. After talking to my pre-health advisor and other admissions counselors and people that have done it before, you just have to put which subject you think fits best with the course. For example, for techniques of ceramics that I took, I didn't know what subject to put it under because there was other subjects that were really similar to ceramics that wasn't art, I thought art fit it the best, so that's what I put, and it's not that big of a deal. And finally, you put your standardized test. If you haven't taken the DAT yet, then you put a date where you signed up to take the DAT or like you're planning to take the DAT. For example, if you look at my second USDAT, it says test be taken August 15th, 2019. It still says test be taken because I actually never took that DAT, but you just want to be constantly updating the application as soon as you receive information. If it gets canceled or delayed, you update it. After you take the DAT, you update it. Finally, we arrive at the bulk of this application, which is the supporting information. Here, you need to figure out if your school does a committee application or if you're just getting recommendation letters from separate professors. For my school, it's required that they put all of my recommendations into one letter and they required three science professors that I had to ask for a recommendation. So in total, I ended up sending three science recommendations, one non-science recommendation, and also an extra application I sent later on to the school from a dentist I shadowed. So your experiences is the section that you're gonna spend a lot of your time on because you need to think back from high school all the way throughout college, all these years, exactly what you've done that relates to dentistry. So when you go in to fill in your experiences, it's gonna have all of the logistical information. Make sure to fill out the description slash key responsibilities. This is where you get to explain your experience personalized to yourself. It does not have to be intricate. As you see, I put five points here. Started pre-dental society. I discussed it with the program director. I actively recruited dental students. I gave presentations and answered questions. And we practiced DAT questions. Pretty simple. I'm gonna pull out the application that I sent to UCSF because it better organizes the experiences. What I wanna show you here is just how broad these experiences can be. Anything that relates to dentistry or shows that you're a good person, I put it in. So example, I went to Boston University's Impressions Day. So it's a pre-dental event that's hosted by Boston University. And I just went to that school. I talked to students and faculty. We signed up for a few like clinical sessions. So let's say I learned about building resumes. So I just put it here. The more you can show the missions that you're invested into dentistry, the stronger your application will be. So during COVID times, let's say you watched a webinar on shadowing or a webinar on how to create a great resume. You should be keeping track of that and you put everything into this experience section. All of your academic enrichment activities, all your volunteer activities, all of your shadowing opportunities, all of the research that you've done, the extracurricular activities that you've been a part of all go on to here. Just to show you how broad this is, I even put in um, that I danced for a show, that I created YouTube videos. I, I remember even putting in here that I donated blood twice. If you have an activity and you're on the fence about, uh, should I put it in, uh, maybe I shouldn't, just put it in. <laughs> the next section here is achievements and same with experiences, you're putting every like plaque or award or achievement that you have done. So mine is littered with Dean's List, 
there was a Jack Han award that was made when I was uh, working for uh, Clark University Rapid Response, which is like the EMS. Athletic awards, art awards, even participation awards if you feel like it has helped you grow as a person or has helped you in any way. Under licenses, I've seen people leave this section blank, but there's definitely licenses that you have, such as a driver's license. So I put in my driver's license, I put in my basic life support license, as well as my emergency first responder license. You could have a license on being a swimming coach or hunting, anything, put that in there. And finally, the personal statement. The tip that I'll say about the personal statement is that you wanna make your story unique and you wanna convey that. You did have a unique story. Your story is completely different from all the other stories. So in my application, I talked about tennis. I talked about photography and it relates to dentistry because it's aesthetic, the, that portion. And then I talked about your shadowing experience. I talked more about the personal aspect of shadowing and how I saw my doctor treat their patients. The story should be cohesive, it should make sense, and it should all revolve somehow around why you applied to dental school. And then finally, you have your program materials. This is where you choose which place you wanna to apply to. So let's say I wanna to apply to University of California, San Francisco. So I find that here, I press add, I press continue. And at the end, once you chose every single application you apply to, the first one's gonna be $259. Uh, after that, each additional one is gonna be slightly over $100. You can see how fast the cost can add up here. If you do have a budget, keep in mind that every single school pretty much has a secondary application, which you're gonna have to pay another $50 to $100 for. So calculate that in for the total fee, because the total fee that they show on AdSAS is not gonna include those additional costs from the specific school. And boom, and that is your run through of the IDEA AdSAS application, the application to dental school. Pay a lot of attention on this, get started early, get all your transcript in, work on your personal statement, have multiple drafts of your personal statement. The schools that you apply to will most likely send you a secondary application to your email where you have to fill out and then pay that additional cost. I wish the best of luck to everyone applying this cycle and I hope this video helped. Peace.